Mirror, mirror on the wall, I object to them all. What are you talking about? Talking about objections, mate. Oh, so that's the topic that is of today's topic. episode of Trench Tips. I didn't read the title. I thought it might be about mirroring. Very good. I can see why you went there. But no, Active today listening. we're going to talk... Sorry? I... <laughs> <Active> listening. <laughs> I... Sometimes good, sometimes bad. <laughs> today we're going to talk about objections. Mm. I think this is one of those things of, is there the silver bullet for objections? Is there a 100% effective way of dealing with them? If they say this, do you say, great, that makes perfect sense. Hit and go through some big spiel about how the Buzz platform can deal with it more than the PRX591 ever could. <laughs> or is there another way? I and is there a way that me and you could maybe share today, Jack? We could, we could. So when someone objects, Zach, what, what, are, they, what are they really saying? What, what are some of the fundamentals of what they're saying, the foundations? They could be saying many things. They could be so. The first thing is it could be a genuine objection. I don't have any money for this. Genuine could be genuine. You know, we're in a cost of living crisis, <coughs> post pandemic economy. People went mad with venture capital money that they can't pay back. Yeah, that's a real scenario. They could have no money. Mm-hmm. The other scenario is it could be a stall. Someone could be saying, I, f- I actually can't make a decision. That's not the way my brain's wired right now. So I'm actually just buying myself some time to make a more informed decision. It feels a bit uncomfortable for me. Um, or waste of time, tire kicker, looking for an excuse to get out of it. Yeah. Those are probably the three. I, There's maybe I, some I, others in there. Hello, my name's Jack, and I can't say no to people. That's your area. Jack, thank you for meeting us today at Can't Say No to People's Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> what was the reason you came? Yes. No. Very much. <laughs> no. Um, okay. So I think this one's big on discovery calls. So when, when you're sitting, you've, you've booked the meeting, you're sitting down with somebody. I know this is something that we like to do because it, we get a lot of inquiries. And I think the game is like, okay, these tire kickers, or are they interested? Are they not? What, what is going on? Yeah. Yeah, what and what are you asking me? How do we deal with? Well, well, I was saying I, I know what we do and what we like to do a lot of the time is that there's different situations for it, and and I think it is something that can be used in a lot of situations where it can be great, but to front load it. Yeah, and before I, we talk about what that means, I'll pose a question to the audience, but I'll, you can be the audience, Jack. So I'll pose it to you. I might not know the, the audience answer. listening. Well, let's see. If you don't, you sucked. Uh, no pressure. So. <laughs> An an objection, who is the best person to deal with an objection? The salesperson or the prospect? Okay, I'm going to leave a dramatic pause. Everyone's thinking. They've got their answers. It's like ready, steady, cook. Hold your red pepper in the air, your green pepper. It is the prospect. It is. Right. And I actually think if I asked 10 salespeople that in isolation, just face-to-face like we are now, they would probably say the same answer, the prospect the reality of that on a sales call is very different, especially when you're selling a product that you know the ins and outs of or a service that you know the ins and outs of. There's this tendency to <coughs> <coughs> sort of cough like that halfway through it. No, <laughs> there's this tendency to like run in and be like, well, no, 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 ours is actually totally different. And uh, if I said that ours was this and that, but really you can't persuade anyone of anything. You know what I mean? You've got to be helping someone persuade themselves. Mm. So this is probably where front loading comes in. Now, the next question I'd have for you, but before we jump into what front loading is, is if there's a load of common objections that you get, and it typically happens at the end of the call when you start talking about price and terms and logistics and things like that, if happening at the end of the call, and that's when things get sticky or don't happen or slow down, what could you do to fix that? Where could you put them instead? I'm going to pick it up. I'm not going to put it in the middle. I'm going to put it right at the start of the conversation. Beautiful. Okay, so what does that actually sound like? It could sound like a number of different things. Look, look Zach, before we, before we get started, can I be really honest with you? You can. There's probably three reasons why you choose not to work with me by the end of this conversation. Three reasons? There could be. Depends what on the product or service. 
So it really depends, but obviously, like, it's running through. What what are the biggest objections? Time, money, effort, and things like that. So it could mm-hmm. be a case of, like, people tend not to work with us because although they might see it's a, a really good fit, they probably wouldn't have the time to implement it. They're far too busy. Well, I was actually doing some uh, sales training as a favor for someone recently. It's been Whoa. quite enjoyable, actually. Um but we do this bit on budget was the main objection that they get, right? So it's quite good to have these sessions and then there might be a few weeks by and then we sit down again. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And um, budget was one that he was getting all the time. So he said, how would I deal with it in terms of this front loading? So what I'd said to him was I'd said, you know, I'll, I'll share with you a few different reasons like you just said. Typically, this time of year in this economy – people in your space don't actually have budget put aside for this type of thing. And we only find that at the end of the call, the response that you started getting of people is no, no, we've got budget for this. We've got it assigned and we are looking into it. There we go. Now that is, there was once an objection at the end of a call in budget. It's taken away. Not only is it taken away, but the prospect has defended it rather than you talking them into why that's not an issue. Hmm. And they can't rely right. They cannot rely on that later in court. So when we get to that point and and for whatever reason, they may be saying, no, I'm not interested. I don't want to. I just want to think about it. They can't say we don't have the budget because actually, Mr. Prospect, your honor, I'll see you. Um, they've, they've, They've kind of highlighted it already and they kind of know what kind of conversation they're getting into. Exactly. Now, the other side of this that people will probably be thinking, and we're not here to just tell you, here's something that always works, but it depends on what you're thinking of as something working. So I would argue that someone being very qualified into a yes or very qualified into a no are both good outcomes. Would, would you agree? I would agree. I would say that your your pipeline would probably drop because this is, this is something for, for, for sales leaders to, to think about your pipeline will probably drop. So say yeah. say on average, you're bringing in 500,000, you, you, you front load a few objections, you might get rid of a few tire kickers, you'll probably lose a few people, a couple of hundred thousand pounds worth of people saying, oh, actually, um, I need to think about it. Brilliant. I'm Mr. Salesperson, I go and ring the bell, I run, I whack it in the CRM, and it's there. Um, so it's a difficult one. It is, it's a case of like, what is your job as a salesperson? Let's take it back to basics. What is your mm. job? So yeah, well, it's, to go, it's, to, it's to get yeses and nos. Yeah. And no think it overs or maybes or add nonsense to the pipeline that you're forever chasing. So if you're getting yeses and nos, like in our world, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Um, I said pretty happy because there's always room for improvement. And exactly. that's the kind of guy I am, striving for excellence. <laughs> um, I think for, but, for the same. Uh, Sorry, Jack. I just wanted to give an example while we're on the conversation that that goes the other way. So I think you've had these as well. It's an inbound inquiry. We've changed the website now to to adhere to this, but there used to be an inbound inquiry that had happened. And at the start, I'd say, typically end of the call, there'll be some sort of payment up front required. And you're probably looking at a day rate of X amount of money. But you might tell me that's ridiculous and you can't afford it. And the guy I spoke to said, yeah, that's ridiculous. I can't afford it. And we left it there and didn't waste any more time on it. And what did you do with those sweet 28 minutes that you got You want to know? <laughs> Maybe not on this podcast. What The answer was, I started cold calling and I found a new prospect. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, it started calling and I found a new prospect. That's what you yeah, want to good answer. believe. Um, it's, it goes back to your job is to sell and... If you are one of these salespeople that, that are kind of putting those maybes in the pipeline and it's good, maybe six months a year, if you're working in a big SaaS platform, um, your typical sales cycle will probably be, in fact, I think I'm getting a cold call. Should I answer, answer it? Let's do it. Hello. Oh, is that Jake? Not Jake, Jack. No, so I spoke to somebody the other day. I didn't put through a, a, a life insurance. You've got the wrong email on the wrong oh. person there. Oh, because um, I've got your details here. Um, the email is, is your surname, G-R-E-E-H. Is it great? 
Nope. That isn't me. That I'm not that man. I, I probably wouldn't feel comfortable doing that if that's okay. No, can I just confirm what I've got on a system that maybe RM eighteen seven SP? Is that your postcode? That's not my postcode. No, that's fine. No worries, Jack. Do you apologise? Thanks for your time, mate. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers, bro. Well, right. what an insight into how they can go. Yeah. yeah. I can. Um, that's really thrown me. Well, yeah. I tell you what we could. I, I tell you what we could do. Let's just do the start of a discovery call, right? The very start, the first few questions, just to give a flavour of what that should feel like, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can be the Mr. Mr. Prospect. I don't do really any small talk at all. So that might be an episode, another podcast episode for another day. You, I think you do a bit, don't you, Jack? But I've, I've, I've really cut down on my small talk. I look in the eye and I say, let's get down to business. Let's get down, let's get down. Let's get, down, Let's to get down to business. Exactly. So I would just say, Jack, thanks for um, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate you're a busy man. So hopefully you don't mind if we just jump straight in. No, that's fine. Okay. Um, just to kind of manage expectations, what what are you hoping will have happened by the end of this call? Um, a clearer insight into how you work and commercials. Okay. And if both of those things happen, then what? Well, then. Uh, uh, We'd have a think and we would see if it would be suitable for us. Okay. You'd have a think. Interesting. Yeah. I've always got okay. A think. So have a think is actually something that can happen in these calls. I just want to share with you maybe two or three things that can happen that might mean that you don't move forward and we're wasting each other's time. Is that all right? Yeah, fair. Okay. So typically the way we work is there'll be some form of payment up front, we'd agree some form of trial to make sure that we can deliver what you're on your expectations and on what we believe we can deliver for you as well. But there'll be some form of payment up front, onboarding and next steps that happen at the end of this call, which usually means that people say, actually, I'm okay. What would you tell me if I told you that? Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm prepared for that. You sure you don't sound prepared for that? Zach, I'm prepared. Okay. All right. All right. I believe you. Um, secondly, there's probably going to be an element of us working together a bit more in terms of I'd probably require quite a lot from you. We'd probably have to sit down maybe one or two more times so I can really understand your business <coughs> and definitely understand your buyers a little bit better. You're probably a really busy person and couldn't spare that time for me. No, that's fine. I've got a clear diary for you, Zach Thompson. Okay, okay. And the other one is... I'm so bloody forward that people at the end say to me they'd have a think about it rather than just telling me no. Um, well, no, I think if, if, it's a, if it's a yes, I'd tell you it's a yes. And what if it's a think about it? Well. What do you I think that know. means? Well, it might mean no. Okay, so would you just tell me no? I would just tell you no. So why don't you think about this? <laughs> Think about <laughs> so typically they go a bit like that. I mean, some people might watch that and hear that and think that's some of that sounds a bit uncomfortable. And you know what I say to those people? Good. <laughs> it's it's meant to. It's meant to feel a bit squirmy and a bit uncomfortable, some of this, because you need people to really think about it. And the pressure either needs to feel shared or on the other side. Mm. <laughs> But the small talking salesperson that doesn't ask the questions up front, well, they're left like a helpless puppy chasing their tail for the rest of their lives. Exactly. And, you know, I'm sure you're the same, Jack, but most people, when I'm that direct and forward at the start, I go, oh, I love this. This is great. My kind of guy. This is great. If you deal with decision makers and busy businesses, they'll be like, yeah, great. This is what I like. Get straight down to it. Tell me what I can expect. I'll see if I can do it and if it's worth the time. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree with everything you say. I think do you're you? amazing. Well, do I not sound like I'm agreeing? Or are you just okay. objection handling? Well, I don't know. You just don't sound very sure. I'm sure. It's fine. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm fine. Yeah, well, that's it. So, anyway, <laughs> front load. Get it out of the way. Anything the way. That, that you know is difficult. If you struggle to ask for a yes or no, get that at the front. 
at the end, there's going to be a point where I'm going to ask you to make a decision. I sometimes get a bit nervous about that bit. So when I say, what are your thoughts? Are you happy to give me a yes or a no? Yeah, of course. Zach, what are your thoughts? Well, um, you said at the beginning, mm. you'd give me a yes or a no. You're a liar. Are you so sorry. I've got written down here on my, I've got loads of notes and you actually said you'd give me a yes or a no. Oh, so sorry. You said it. You said it. Sorry Hate about that. to be that. pedantic. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Why no, it, 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 it might still, you might, it might still happen. You might still get those objections, but if you're bringing them up at the front, you strengthen your chances. And, you know, sometimes you're going to bring something and they say, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen with us. I've got loads of decision makers. We've got budget issues. Cool. At least you're aware of it. And then you can, yeah. you can deal with it however you need to deal with it. Yeah. Don't, <coughs> don't qualify people that aren't qualified and don't disqualify too quickly. Exactly. Easier said than done. Exactly. Thank you all. If there's a, we start getting some nice comments on the YouTube channel about things that people want us to talk about. If you are such a person and you want us to talk about a certain topic or even give us an example of something that you're dealing with, we are more than happy to do so. And as my mum used to said, say, <laughs> if you can't beat them, what's the point in having kids? Cheers. <laughs>